In this video, let's learn about the histology of the mixed type of the salivary gland. In a mixed type of salivary gland, you can notice the presence of the mucus SNI and the serous SNI. So the mixed type of salivary gland means it contains the mucus and the serous SNI. What is meant by the mucus SNI? The mucus SNI are the tall cells with the flat nucleus at the base and which have distinct cell boundaries and they secrete thick mucoid secretion. So these are the mucus SNI and they contain mucoid material and they appear empty inside in the hematoxylin and eosin stain and coming to the serous SNI the serous SNI are a triangular cells with rounded nucleus at the base and their boundaries are indistinct this serous SNI contains the zymogen granules and it secretes thin watery secretion so this serous SNI are mostly present in the parotid type of salivary gland Whereas the mucus SNI that secretes the thick mucoid secretion are mainly present in the sublingual gland. So now in this video, the mixed type of salivary gland means the submandibular gland. The submandibular gland is a mixed type of salivary gland because it have a presence of mucus and the serous SNI. Basically, a structure of a salivary gland contains a stroma parenchyma and a ductal system and the stroma contains of a connective tissue capsule and the septa whereas the parenchyma contains two components the secretory part and a conducting part in the secretory component of the parenchyma it contains closely packed SNI and ducts which are scattered between them and these elements are supported by a connective tissue that divides the gland into thin lobules. So this secretory part contains of the mucus SNI, the serous SNI, the myoepithelial cells. And these myoepithelial cells are present in relation to the SNI and they are intercalated ducts of the salivary gland. So you can see the myoepithelial cell here. We will discuss about this diagram. In the conducting part include the ducts which open into the ductal system in this duct system helps to move on the secretions that are produced by the SNI and the smallest ducts of this ductal system are called as the intercalated ducts and these intercalated ducts open into the striated ducts these intercalated ducts which are lined by the cuboidal epithelium they open into the striated ducts those are lined by the columnar epithelium both striated ducts and the intercalated ducts are the intralobular ducts and these striated ducts open into the XTT ducts these XTT ducts are the interlobular component whereas the intercalated ducts and the striated ducts are the intralobular component and now coming to the labeling and the ducts of this diagram as we already said, the submandibular gland is the mixed type of salivary gland and it contains predominantly the serous type of the SNI with some mucus SNI. So this septa is the interlobular connective tissue septum and these SNI which are filled by thin watery material, these are called as the serous SNI. Always remember the serous SNI are always stained dark in the hematoxylin and iosin stain and their nuclei are placed at the base and their nucleus are rounded in shape. Some serous cells are frequently located at the periphery of the mucus SNI in the form of a crescent shape and these are called as the demilunes. So you can see it here, this is the mucus SNI and some of the serous cells are present in the crescent shape towards the periphery of the mucus cell and this is called as the serous demilunes. So this is a mucus SNI with a serous demilune. You can note the serous demilune here and this is the normal mucus SNI. These mucus SNI are lightly stained 
and they contain thick mucoid material inside it. And there is a presence of some intralobular ducts and the adipose tissue is present all over and you can note the presence of the myoepithelial cell here. So this is the myoepithelial cell. These myoepithelial cells are present in the relation to the SNI and to the intercalated ducts of the salivary glands. These myoepithelial cells are located on the SNI and are often branched and may form baskets around the SNI. They can be branched or stellate and they can be present as the baskets around the SNI. And the clinical correlation according to the salivary glands are the siluria that is also called as stylism. The increase in the flow of the saliva is called as a siluria or the tylism. The second one is the xerostomia. As the name indicates zero, that means decreased salivation is called as the xerostomia. The silodentis, the inflammation of the salivary glands is called as silodenitis. And the most common tumors of the salivary gland are the pleomorphic adenoma that is the mixed salivary tumor pleo meaning mixed and morphic meaning the morphology or the appearance and the pleomorphic adenoma is the most common tumor that affects the salivary gland and the mucoepidermoid carcinoma the mucoepidermoid carcinoma is also the most common malignant salivary tumor so guys this is all about the mixed type of salivary gland that is the submandibular type of salivary gland and this is all about the mucus and serous S9 with the clinical correlation. And do look at some of my recent videos and playlists.